Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to kill Bloodfeld, but before I start this video, if you're looking for some more Slayer guides, please check out the description box below for a full list of all the guides I have posted thus far. Enjoy the rest of the video. So Bloodfelds are one of the easiest Slayer monsters to kill because they are weak to all attack styles including range, magic, and melee, and they attack using a magic-based melee, so safe spotting them or having a high magic defense armor will make killing Bloodfelds very easy. Since you can kill them with any attack style, I will be breaking up this guy into three different setups. So we'll start it off with the ranging gear that you should wear when killing Bloodfelds, and basically you want to bring ranging gear that maximizes your range strength bonus. I have posted a chart on screen now that shows you the best equipment that you wear from the best to the least best. I have also highlighted in green the pieces of armor that gives a ranged damage boost, so try your best to incorporate those items into your setup to kill blood belts faster. You also want to focus on armor that hits harder, so getting items like an armadillo crossbow instead of a rune crossbow, dragon arrows instead of addy arrows, or amethyst broadbolts instead of regular broadbolts will speed up the amount of kills you get per hour. Also, I just want to note, if you have void armor, you should only wear it if you do not have a Slayer Helm or a Black Mask imbued. The Slayer Helm and Black Mask imbued will always have better stats than wearing Void, but if you do not have a Slayer Helm or Black Mask, Void is the better option than pieces of armor that do not increase range strength. With a magic setup, just like range, you want to focus on pieces of armor that increases your magic damage output, and I highlighted those in green to make it easier for you guys to see. Try to incorporate those items into your setup if you can, that way you can speed up the process of killing Bloodfelds. Also, try to get the best spell that you can cast that does the most amount of damage, and it really depends on how much money you want to spend on the task, but the Toxic Trident is great if you have the money and you're looking for speed. The Slayer Staff Enchanted and the Ivan Staff Charge is also a cheaper alternative that hits pretty hard, or just bring the highest elemental spell that you can that you can afford. Once again, I just want to note if you are using Void Armor, you should only wear it if you do not have a Slayer Helmet or a Black Mask imbued. The Slayer Helm and Black Mask imbued will always have better stats than vo wearing Void, but if you do not have a Slayer Helm or a Black Mask, Void is usually better. The only thing that is better than Void is wearing Full Ancestral and a Tormented Bracelet, which is a very costly setup to get. So moving on to the melee setup, and you're going to want to wear your best magic defense gear while trying to maximize your strength bonus. On the screen now, I've listed the best armor that I would wear from the best to the least best in order. If you are lower level and you cannot wear good magic defense gear, you can also wear a prayer gear with you, and I highlighted those in green, but I didn't list out all the different options for prayer gear, so make sure to check on Google what other options you have if you are going with a prayer setup. So now hopefully you have chosen your armor setup, I'll now show you guys some example armor setups and inventory setups for each attack style. So with the ranging setup, I'm bringing an armadillo crossbow, a necklace of anguish, amethyst broad bolt, Ava's accumulator, as well as a Slayer Helm imbued, and those are the really important things that you want to focus on. Because Blood Belts have zero range defense bonus, making sure that you bring the highest hitting gear will speed up the kill of your Blood Belt. In the inventory, I'm bringing a cannon with me. You do not have to bring this with you, but I will show you guys how to use it. I'm also bringing a couple of ranging potions with me, a shark just to heal some health in case I get attacked. I'm also bringing some teleports to house, a Slayer Ring, a rune pouch filled with nature and fire runes to cast low or high alchemy, as well as a herb sack. So for a magic setup example, I'm bringing some just average magic gear. It really doesn't matter too much. The most important things are the ones that increase my magic damage output. In the inventory, I'm bringing some death runes and fire runes to cast the Ivan's Blast. Like I said, this depends on what type of spell that you want to cast. I'm also bringing with me a cannon so I could use it in the Stronghold Slayer Cave, but you do not need to bring it if you don't want to. I also brought a Manta Ray just to heal a little bit of health in case I do get attacked. I'm bringing a Slayer Ring to teleport. I'm also bringing some teleports to house. A Rune Pouch filled with nature and fire runes to cast lower high alchemy. I'm bringing an Imbued Heart. If you have it, that will increase your damage output, as well as a Herb Sack if you do have it. So moving on to the melee setup examples. So like I said, I'm trying to maximize my magic defense bonus as well as my strength bonus. So you can see that I'm bringing some Dehyde with me with my Abyssal Whip, Dragon Offender, things that increase my strength bonus. In my inventory, I'm bringing with me a cannon. And like I said, you can choose whether to bring it or not. Uh, I'm bringing with me a super set of attack, strength, and defense potions. I'm bringing some food to heal because I will be uh, taking damage from the blood bells from time to time. But I'm also bringing with me a rune pouch filled with nature and fire runes, a slayer ring to teleport around. I'm also bringing with me some teleports to house as well as a herb sack. 
If you're a bit lower level and say you don't have a high range level, you can also bring with you a prayer setup. I'm bringing with me some proselyte armor. You can swap it out with initiate or monk's ropes if you do have it. And like I said, I'm just trying to increase my strength bonus and I will be protecting from melee as I attack the blood belts. In the inventory, once again, bring with me a cannon with some cannonballs. I'm bringing just attack and strength potions because I don't really need defense as I use prayer potions. I'm also bringing with me as well 8 to 10 prayer potions. I'm also bringing a rune pouch filled with nature and fire runes. You can also bring a holy wrench if you have it, uh, a slayer ring, uh, also some teleports to house, as well as a herb sack. So hopefully you have set everything up and you've chosen your armor and inventory setup. I'll now show you guys where to kill blood builds, and there are many different locations that you can choose from. You can kill them in the Stronghold Slayer Cave, which is one of the most popular places to kill them. You can also kill them in the Slayer Tower or the Catacombs of Karen, but just note that the only place where you can use the cannon is the Stronghold Slayer Cave. So many people choose to kill that spot over the Slayer Tower and the Catacombs just because you can kill blood belts much, much quicker. So I'll show you guys the most popular place to kill them, which is the Stronghold Slayer Cave. And this is located in the Tree Gnome Stronghold. So like I said, you can use a Slayer Ring to teleport there, or you can use one of the Spear Trees that are located all over RuneScape to get to the Tree Gnome Stronghold. So I'll teleport there right now, and like I said, you just want to find your best way to get to the Tree Gnome Stronghold, and my best way is using the Slayer Ring. But what you want to do is you want to enter the cave, and once you enter the cave, the Blood Belts will be located just east of the entrance, and there will be four different rooms that you can kill them in, so I will zoom out just a little bit. So like I said, there are four different rooms on the eastern side. I will show you guys them and how to safe spot them. So there's one right here directly east, and if you're trying to look to safe spot them, all you really need to do is stand in the passageway uh, and they won't be able to attack you. There's also like different passages all over uh, the Slayer Cave. Uh, you can also see some of the spots where you can drop down your cannon. If you want to safe spot them using range or magic, you can just place it somewhere close by to where you are safe spotting them. That way you can just fill the cannon whenever your cannon runs out of cannonballs. If you're using melee, just make sure to drink a dose of your superset. Drop down your cannon somewhere in the center of the room if you have one and start attacking them. If you're using a prayer melee setup, make sure that you turn on protect from melee, drink a dose of your super attack and strength potion, drop your cannon down if you do have one, and start killing them. I'll now show you guys the next location which is the Slayer Tower, and I'll show you guys where I am on the world map. But to get here you can use the Slayer Ring to teleport using the more Tanya Slayer Tower option. You can also use the fairy ring code CKS, which will teleport you directly south of the Mauritania Slayer Cave. Just make sure to bring a Draymond staff in your inventory to use the fairy ring. So when you get to the Slayer Tower, whichever method that you choose to get here, you can find the blood fields in the basement by just climbing down this ladder, but you will need to be on a Slayer task in order to damage them. You can also find them on the first floor in the northwestern room. Uh, just make sure that if you are climbing up this spike chain that you will need to wear a nose peg or a slayer helm before climbing up because you will be attacked by aberrant specters right away which will drain all of your attack stats to 1. If you don't have 61 agility, you will need to use the stairs. I'll just turn the screen here. It's on the southeastern part of the room. And once you climb up the stairs, you will need to run northwest to the blood belts and you won't be attacked by the aberrant specters so you don't have to worry about bringing a nose peg or a slayer helmet with you. So if you are killing the ones in the basement, I will show you guys a couple of safe spots that you can use if you're using ranger magic. If you're using melee, you can just go ahead and attack them. Uh, but you can use this table right in the center as a safe spot. There's also a safe spot right over here, right beside this knife drop uh, in the northwestern part of the basement. And like, like I said, you can just kill them right here and they won't be able to access this part of the tunnel. If you are killing them on the first floor in the northwestern room, there's actually a safe spot right here northeast of the blood belt. So what you can do is just stand right behind this chair and then you can start attacking them and you should be pretty safe from getting attacked from the blood belts. Like I said, if you are using melee, you can just go ahead and attack any blood belt and just make sure to drink your attack strength and defense potions. The last location that I'm showing you guys is on the catacombs of Karen on Zaya. If you have never been to Zaya before, you will need to have the client of Karen quest completed. Once you have finished that quest, you want to speak to Veos on the southeastern part of the dock on Port Sarim, and he will take you to Zaya. So if you haven't already, I highly recommend you check out my guide on how to unlock the Koran Teleport and getting the Transportation Incantations book. I will post that link in the description box below, but getting this teleport is extremely useful because it'll allow you to teleport directly to the Catacombs of Koran in order to kill Blood Belts. So if you have followed the guide or you already have that teleport unlocked, you can just go ahead and cast that spell yourself in your spellbook using 69 magic. 
If you don't have 69 magic, but you do have that teleport unlocked by following my guide, you can still use the teleport by going to a player-owned house on World 330 and using their Koren portal that is dark green in color. Another way to get to the entrance of the catacombs right here is by using the teleportation scroll that you get from Nightmare Zone on a teleport to house tablet and redirecting it to the Koren teleport requiring level 25 construction in order to make the tablet. So I'll show you guys on the minimap where that is, but uh, if you make the tablet, it will bring you right over here once you teleport, and you just want to run northwest until you get close to the kingdom of Karend. Another way to get here is just simply traveling by Veos, who's located on Port Sarim. I'll show you guys on the map where he will bring you, but he will bring you on the dock of the Pissarellius house right over here. All you need to do is run all the way west. You may want to bring a stamina potion with you as well, and you just want to keep running west until you hit the statue that is right here. If you have the Xerix Talisman already, you can also use the Xerix Heart Teleport which will teleport you right to the statue. You can also use the Xerix Lookout Teleport and then run north to the entrance that will teleport you right around here. You just want to run north. You can also use the Xerix Glade Teleport which will teleport you right here. And you just want to run northwest until you hit to this Kingdom of Great Karen. So there's a lot of ways to get to the Kingdom of Great Karen. So what you want to do when you get here is you want to investigate the statue to climb down into the catacombs. So when you do get down here, there are two different locations where you can kill Bloodvelds at. So I'll show you guys the first one, which is just up north once you climb down here. Just keep running up north and run east past the hill giants. And you'll see that the Bloodvelds are right over here. So if you are safe spotting them, I will just turn the screen a little bit. You want to stand basically where this guy is uh, in this northern part of the passage. And then you can kind of just attack them. Uh, and they should be stuck just about there. And I guess this guy is attacking it as well. But... He's got the right idea, just get the blood vel stuck there, and then you can just safe spot them here. If you are using melee, like I said, just go ahead and you can just start attacking them. I'll now show you guys the second location. So starting back at the entrance, what you want to do is you want to run east, and you'll see some moss giants in the next room over to the east side, but you want to run south once you enter that room. Keep running south, and it should be in the third room. You'll see a little small passageway here, and you'll see the blood belts. So what you want to do, I'm just going to turn the screen a little bit, that way you guys can see the safe spot. So what you want to do is you want to drag out these blood belts into this passageway, and you want to stand right here to safe spot them, and they'll get stuck right on this edge. So I'll try to do that right now, I'll try to get this blood belt over here. So just kind of lure it into this passageway, and you want to stand right here where it'll get stuck, and then you can go ahead and just attack the blood belt, and... As easy as that, it's going to be able to safe spot it. You can also, like I said, use melee and just start attacking them. If you're using a prayer melee setup, you can go ahead and turn on protect from melee and then just start attacking them. Uh, but anyways, that's about it for this guide on how to kill blood builds. If you guys can, please leave it a like. I would really appreciate it because it will help with this video and this channel out. But that's about it, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Good luck on your task. I'll see you guys in the next guide. Bye.